Chameleon is one of my favorite repeat villains in Wings of Fire. He's a minor villain and never does anything particularly bad like genocide, but s something about him is just very intriguing. Maybe that is because he's the only Rainwing villain who does any harm. And he does it without any of the inherent Rainwing abilities. His resourcefulness and intelligence is pretty high. And if it hadn't been for Scarlet, he probably would still have the scroll to this day. Chameleon's psychology is very interesting. His tragic past actively affects his future, with him actively attacking members of his own tribe without mercy nor hesitation. All this compounds to create a very sympathetic villain. Not one all too unlike Darkstalker, as we will soon find out. Before we get started, if you are new to this channel, please think about subscribing. I regularly post Wings of Fire and War Cats content so you'll never be bored. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me, I wouldn't get here without you. I'd like to disclose that this video is talk about neglect and ableism. If you feel uncomfortable with those topics, feel free to find another video, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Let's start with Chameleon's time in the rainforest. Chameleon was born with a snout deformity, which prevented him from sleeping right. It also caused him to not be able to camouflage. I don't think the snout deformity actually caused a lack of camouflage. I think that they may be the part of the same disorder and just look unrelated on the surface. Because of this, and his ironic name, he was chased from the rainforest. Because of that, Chameleon suffers from a far-reaching hatred of his own tribe. When he finds out Kinkaju is alive, he is a bit annoyed and even feels justified in attacking her. You mean that Rainwing who was traveling with the Icewing Prince? He finally said. She's not dead? You were trying to kill her? Pearl said appalled. Really? She's just a dragonette. She's a Rainwing, he hissed. She'd laugh at me just as much as any of her tribe if she'd met me before I found my power. Wow, Pearl said. She tried to picture a tiny, brightly colored Rainwing. I've never met anyone who've hated rainwings before. They're so inoffensive. It's like hating caterpillars. I'm not terribly fond of caterpillars either, Charmillion observed. Nasty, crawly things. Of all dragons, Pearl thought, I should be the one who can understand fury and vengeance and wanting to lash out. Charmillion hates all rainwings, and that obviously influences himself. His adaptation of other tribes can be viewed as him wanting to be as far away as his own tribe as possible, as well as look at me now for all those who made fun of his scale shifting. Also, during this passage, she refers to other dragons as as much as any of her tribe instead of as much as any of my tribe as well. He feels vastly superior to his own tribe, asking could a mere rainwing accomplish his feats on page 207. He then stumbled upon the scroll and learned how to read it. He was recruited by Scarlet and, be and became her animus for a while. Chameleon had a daughter, Peril, at some point. Though this child was with Kestrel, they didn't date. Scarlet pretty much set up her pet animus with her favorite general and hoped for the best. While they had a child they aren't a ship, it was just a convenience thing. Scarlet does get not one, but two dragonets out of disagreement. However, one of them has fire skills and the other one is unfortunately fireless. I feel tempted to theorize that he enchanted their egg, as fire skill and fireless twins are rare and what are the chances, but it would be out of character. The only reason he'd had for doing so would be Scarlet's orders, and she was disgusted by the dragonets in the end. Chameleon does not question what happened to the eggs they helped father until he was told about Prill as Cirrus the Icewing. After stalking her on her journey to possibility, he reveals himself to Prill and after she grievously harms Winter. Pearl believes that all of her hard work reforming her personality is ruined. She's proven herself to be a danger to other dragons, and if not for Turtle, it would be likely that she would have claimed another victim. No other dragon would ever embrace her, not even Clay. Chameleon shows up and brings with him Scarlet, the only other dragon who not only accepted Pearl as a murderer, but embraced her, unlike the others who judged her. In times of great pain, people are likely to go back to what they know best, and what Peril knew best was the abusive grasp of Queen Scarlet. Peril even thinks this to herself. Peril closed her eyes, frowning. This conversation was distracting her from her goal, killing Scarlet. If that was still the right thing to do, was it? Queen Scarlet didn't seem so terrifying and monstrous here, in this quiet valley, talking about Peril's lovely craziness and her father. Remember all the terrible things she's done, that random mudwing she killed to get that head, setting Clay and his friends to fight in the arena, forcing my mother to kill my twin brother? But she kept me alive when everyone else in the tribe would have had me killed the moment I hatched. And she's right, she never wanted to change me, she likes my skills the way they are, I'm not even sure Clay feels that way. 
She remembered him wincing when he touched her, and the way he watched her wings carefully when she was near anything flammable. Did Queen Scarlet really have to die? Oh, Clay, why can't you be here to tell me what's right? The choice may have been obvious to her with just that. However, to sweeten the deal, he adds in an enchanted amulet. The primary enchantment is to get rid of her fire scales, but the secondary is to make her forget about Clay and become loyal to Queen Scarlet. Baril, unaware of the enchantment, joins her father in the ex-queen in reclaiming the Skywing throne. This pretty awfully backfires as Ruby bakes free, and so does Pearl from their respective spells. Ruby or Tourmaline manages to kill Queen Scarlet. Chameleon realizes that he's made a significant mistake and offers to Peril that he will take her and they will live a new life together. This shows apparent care to his daughter, but it's, but it's pretty fake. If he had any love for her, then he would have not enchanted her in the first place. It is likely the only reason he invited her was to take advantage of her. Sure, she is not a queen, but she's a fire skills. Hanging out with her could provide some advantages and it would be easy to manipulate his own daughter. He says that they will be mudwings to get and live in the swamps, however, Chameleon would never resign himself to a peaceful life, as evidenced by his actions as the series progresses after he becomes a mudwing. Even after he loses a scroll, he tries to gain his riches through many schemes. Chameleon refuses to give up the scroll, citing that no one is as smart as him, and he found it, so it was his. However, life doesn't work that way, and Turtle took it anyway using his real animus magic. Despite that, he's left with his pre-existing spells. He ends up going to be a mudwing despite lacking Peril, and of course gets himself involved in a grand conspiracy. After his identity is shredded, he once again leaves. He reappears for the last time in Night Kingdom where King Kaju takes his scroll. Before she does, he explains, I'm nothing without my shape. You can't leave me as a useless rainwing. Showing that his bravado and egocentrism was really a cover for his deep inner insecurities. Chameleon never learned how to form connections with the other dragons, so he chases whatever fortune he may find. Because he was raised without any gold or possessions of value, he feels oddly attracted to them, perhaps as a status symbol to make up for his lack of rainbow scales. Chameleon is a smart dragon, he learned how to read by himself and figured out what the scroll could do. But from there, he used his powers for evil. He could have helped other dragons for free and not just the highest bidder. He became obsessed with himself, thinking he was better than other dragons and even those from his own tribe. Doesn't that sound familiar? A dragon who manipulates others for their own benefit? Looks like we've got a mini dark soccer on our hands. The background of these dragons and their tribes contributed to their mortals. Both were told that there was something wrong with them. Darkstalker's Icewing Father and Charmeleon's and Chameleon Scales, and they were isolated due to that. They even began to hate that part of themselves, attacking dragons from that tribe. Darkstalker even enchanted an object to automatically murder for him. However, they managed to attract companions and admirers due to their great powers, and they figured out there must be something about themselves worth redeeming. Those powers. And if that was the only reason they were worth anything, they would use it to the fullest of their ability no matter what the subject was, even if that included stripping other dragons of their free will. Both of these dragons could have done something great, but instead turned to the dark side. In the process, they drove away everyone they loved or dragons who could have loved them. And even after they try to use their animus magic to get those connections back, they fail and are left all alone without their magic and defeated. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I make Wings of Fire and War Guys videos pretty often, and your support would mean a lot to me. And to those already subscribed, thank you so much for your continued support. I wouldn't have gone here without y'all. That's all. Peace out.